So Pinterest, Pinterest, uh, photo, focused, social network. Photo, focused, social network. Well, that sounds like all of them. Uh, but they did it in a slightly different way in groups, well, in, in boards, which are groups. They were first called pin boards. I don't think they called pin boards anymore, they're just called boards. But what Pinterest is, the idea, it's another social network, another place to connect with friends and family, or businesses to connect with customers. But Pinterest is like, it's like this. Let's look at ancient Pinterest. Look at that right there on the wall. That's ancient Pinterest. This old pin board. So all of the stuff here is, you know, public. Everyone can see it and uh, look at that stuff. Now, this room doesn't have one, but in these other rooms on campus, there are a couple of them. There's one on one wall and one on another wall, so it could have different things. Uh, that analogy is what then boards are in Pinterest. That board right there in the real world could be all about information of our culinary program, let's say. And everything we pin there is all about culinary. Then we have another board on another part of the room where it's all about technology classes we offer. So on that board, we pin all the things about technology. Well, that's one of the things that differentiates then Pinterest from the others. But I do have to say, almost all of these networks, they have some sort of unique idea in the beginning, and then every other network rips them off. So then all the <laughs> networks start to look the same. Twitter's big thing was 140 characters. And then all the other networks, they made infinite characters. And now Twitter's like, ah, oh, well, maybe 140 is not enough. We'll, we'll magnanimously give you double. So now 280 characters on Twitter are being rolled out. Um, Pinterest, okay, its big thing was we'll have these, well, you'll be able to share photos like every other network, but you'll organize them into boards, sort of like groups. Well, that sounds like collections in Google+. That sounds like a kind of an album in Facebook. So then uh, other more blatant examples, Snapchat. Snapchat, one of its big things is that it had these self-destructing messages. Uh, people liked that one because you could share something embarrassing and then it would go away in 24 hours. Whereas in every other network, it stays there unless you delete it. So Snapchat, people would be snapping, sending each other embarrassing stuff, and then it goes away in 24 hours. If you didn't see it in 24 hours, it's gone. If you did see it, if you did, uh, gone, yes. If you didn't see it, if you did see it, then great, you saw something fun and cool for those 24 hours and then it's gone. In theory, it's gone, but there's been many examples where people have accidentally, like their stuff didn't really go away, and you know the networks say, well, that was an accident and all of that. <laughs> but uh, let's believe them and say, yeah, it's gone in 24 hours. Well, that was their big thing on Snapchat, and then Instagram borrowed that, which is owned by Facebook. So all of these networks are just copying each other nowadays. It's kind of boring. What's the uniqueness? So Pinterest... Uh, Another thing that's unique about it that it hasn't been copied very well by the other networks, it seems to have organically developed a uh, demographic. Demographic has skewed, skewed toward <coughs> a female audience. So maybe not by design, but it ended up that... Um, in the beginning and, and still now more of the audience using Pinterest is a female audience. So if I've got a product that I want to reach a female audience, this is one of the reasons I may want to think about getting into Pinterest. Not to say that I can't reach any audience, but on any network you can reach any audience, but on sometimes on some networks it has more of a focus, like Snapchat is often a younger audience. So I wouldn't really be using Snapchat if I maybe have a serious business, like I'm a lawyer or a realtor, maybe it's too much of a younger network at the moment. But you could possibly, probably reach some audience on Snapchat, or better yet, I'll go to the network where it might be better, LinkedIn. Maybe if I'm on LinkedIn where it's the more professional network, I could reach that audience. So I don't talk too much about like the demographic of this one is this, and the demographic is that is that, because I don't think that's that valuable. 
you can look it up and such, but one thing that I would say is it skews toward a female audience Pinterest. But you would be able to find every audience on every network if you look for it. So this one also has also has personal or business accounts. Don't need, however, you don't need a personal one first to create the business. Facebook, you needed the personal account first to verify you're a real person. Then you can create the business listings. On Pinterest, you don't. You can uh, go directly to create the business listing without having the personal one. I, I'll note here, and we'll see it ourselves in a bit, business, business.pinterest.com is the, the business portal. Um, because when we'll see when we go to Pinterest.com, it'll say create an account. But that's going to be to create an account as a person. We'll run business.pinterest. That's where we'll create the business one. But I want to look at the main, the main uh, Pinterest screen for a moment. So in these four classes of this month, we're covering four networks. And then next month, we're covering three networks. And in total, I think we're covering like six or seven networks. And people always ask, do I need to use them all? Or do I need to be good at them? Do I need to be active on all of them? Ideally, you would, especially if you don't know who your audience is or where they're at. If you're active on all of the networks to some degree, then you can figure out which is going to work best for you. But that's a lot of work, posting something new on all the networks, or posting variations of things on all the networks, or posting the same thing on all the networks. There's still a lot of effort. I did mention Buffer last week, which lets you post quickly the same thing to all the networks. So that's possibly one way. But the, the tactic, be active on all, quote unquote, the popular networks to determine eventually which is best for you. If I say right now, you know, you've got a product uh, for moms, and I say, okay, Pinterest all the way. Maybe. Or maybe you might actually find that mom audience on Instagram or YouTube. So I wouldn't, that's why I don't talk, people, uh, I'm surprised they haven't asked, you haven't asked this semester, but people always ask, well, uh, I heard that XYZ network is for this audience and XYZ is for that audience. No. Uh, it, they do skew toward an audience, but you would be able to find your audience um, if you look for it. So I would say be active on all the popular networks, determine the best for you, use buffer.com uh, to help you manage them all. I believe I saw, however, uh, when we were looking at buffer last time, the free buffer plan does not include Pinterest usage. It's the next level up, the awesome plan, which is like uh, $9.99 a month, then you can manage multiple profiles as well as Pinterest. So then when you determine what's the best one for you, pull back to the one or the two that would work best for your time and effort. Or, short answer, <coughs> Facebook. If you have no time, no money, no budget, Facebook. If you have the time, try all the networks, then figure out the best one. Uh, but again, the double-edged sword on Facebook, that's when you've got to pay some amount, and that's when I'm assuming you might at least be able to pay one dollar once in a while to reach more of an audience on Facebook. Maybe skip those lattes one or two times, and then suddenly you have this budget for Facebook, and then it pays you back.
All right, so looking at the Pinterest homepage, Pinterest.com, In the background, you see scrolling pictures. I show this so that you can um, get an idea that it's very picture focused. Um, all the networks, of course, you can share pictures and video and all of that, but uh, we'll, we'll see pictures and all of that. Uh, I didn't mention it for the other networks, but here's something to start to think about. Most of these networks also have a blog. Uh, if we take a quick look at the blog here, so on the Pinterest homepage, click on blog at the bottom. This is, you know, the company line. This is straight from the horse's mouth. Uh, in this case, it's basically blog.pinterest.com. And a lot of networks have that sort of setup, blog.twitter.com. Takes you to the official uh, Twitter blog. So a lot of networks have blog.network.com and I bring up the official company blogs because that's where you get announcements of services and features of the network that's um, where you get case studies and advice for businesses advice for businesses Don't forget to visit the company's blog. Even if it's not exactly this address, I'm sure it'll easily uh, direct you to the right one. They've all got a blog. Get the latest info, the latest news. Upcoming features, advice, you know, business advice, case studies. They often show you, this company used Pinterest this way. So that gives you a great starting point for yourself, for your own business. How should I use uh, how should I use uh, Pinterest? I don't have an idea. Well, reading the blog will often guide you, give you some ideas. Let's see what's here. So, the Pinterest 100 top ideas to try in 2017. Do or die. Top Halloween trends from 2017. Pin frights report. So Halloween's coming up. Here's a case study and a, and a blog about how you might want to tap into Halloween in, for your business. Update on the new iOS 11, uh, their transparency report. So now they've got 200, and milli 200 million users. They launched in 2010. Seven years later, they have 200 million users. So it it's pales in comparison to Facebook, which has two billion users, not million, billion, but nothing has reached the, the level of Facebook. And every once in a while, there's a new network that is going to be the Facebook killer, and they all fail. But that doesn't mean they were a failure. They failed in taking down Facebook, but they succeeded in their niche, perhaps. And the double-edged sword of Facebook in that I have to pay and all of that might drive people away. Well, I'll go to these other networks where, okay, there's only 200 million people but I'm going to reach the right amount of people and the ones that are interested in my product. 16 fall trends, more ways to search outside the box. So I definitely recommend check out this, uh, this blog and the other blogs of the other sites. So after you look at that, then let's go to the address business.pinterest.com. Business.pinterest.com.
can you create, like if you already have Pinterest, can you create a page like you do on Facebook, or do they have to be separate? It's one email account controls one Pinterest account, okay. basically. So what people do oftentimes, accidentally, is they do go to the main Pinterest home page and they go through this process of creating an account for their business, but technically it's being created as a person. So there is a way to convert if you have created a business, if you've created a personal account to, to convert it to a business account. Some people need that. But uh, it, it basically, uh, like most networks, they want, a they want you to use it the specific way for your specific needs. Uh, so here under the business portal, get discovered, increase consideration, drive results. So there's that marketing term again there, uh, consideration. Uh, they use discovered rather than awareness, and then drive results, synonym for conversions. So again, uh, awareness, consideration, conversions, all of that marketing jargon, but in the end I want results, so results. People on Pinterest are open to all kinds of possibilities, whether you want to drive awareness, increase traffic. So all of these are going to explain what those are, and then ultimately those are guiding you for you to use the paid aspects of Pinterest. And I don't think at the moment you quite need to do that like you do in Facebook. You will be able to use the tactics we talked about in Twitter, and which we'll, we will reiterate here, where you can directly reach your audience without having to pay. We'll, we'll see how in a bit. Pinterest inspires people to act. So I see a lot of the the voice or the verbiage of Pinterest that you need to pay attention to are like is like active speech, action verbs. I'll I'll show you what I mean soon. But think about more in terms of what to do. Use Pinterest to have people do something. You, you know, try something. If I say, you know, sale this Saturday, that's not as powerful in the Pinterest demographic as saying something like how to have a great uh, tailgate party. Uh, I could be trying to sell in my restaurant food, so I could try the sale this Saturday for your tailgate party. Okay, that's kind of passive. In Pinterest, being a little bit more active of how to have the perfect tailgate party. And that's how I would be a little bit more active and use Pinterest. The demographic, the culture here, seems to be like that, I'm a little bit more active. What can I do? What can your business give me to accomplish something better? That kind of active voice works on the other networks too, but it seems that this is, this is how you want to focus a bit more on Pinterest. Try to create content on Pinterest with a more active voice instead of tailgate party coupon and use how to throw the best tailgate party. Obviously you're still trying to sell them your stuff for their tailgate party, but you're being active, you're using this marketing speak about you want the best tailgate party, right? You want to, be, you want to keep up with the Joneses, you want to be better, here's what we provide to make your tailgate party better. And this is an art and a science of the world of marketing. Love them or hate them, Apple is one of the most successful companies in human civilization. Samsung too, but some of these companies that are so big are that big and famous and powerful because a large part to their marketing. You know, Coca-Cola is sugar water. There's no real benefit to it. Drink real water if you want to get hydrated. People like the taste and the, and the culture and the history and memories and all of that, but that's all the marketing. I remember having that Coke with my dad when we were at the lake. I'm going to have a Coke right now and bring me back to that memory. And that's all just nostalgia to sell you sugar water. So marketing, like I said, this is a college major that you can spend years in, in earning. 
but companies like Apple and Microsoft and Nike and Samsung and all of these companies, when they succeed, they tap into the best aspects of marketing to convince you. If you look at oftentimes commercials for you know iPhones are more about the, the moment and the memory and the experience that you can capture with our phones. Because all of the phones nowadays are amazing. They all have the facial recognition and the fingerprint and the 50 megapixel camera and the GPS and all of that. They're all like that with slight variations. But they're all about telling you, with our phone, you're going to capture your amazing experiences. Or like the Samsung one that came out recently, their thing was about, look how big the screen is. It goes edge to edge. So you can capture that whale that's coming in front of you when you're deep diving. Have you seen that commercial? There's a whale passing by that a person is taking a video of in their Samsung device. So, Pinterest, think more in terms of that. And that's, you know, harder to teach, but think in terms of an active voice. What's in it for them if they buy my product, if they follow me, if they like my content? We'll also see group content. by topic in boards. Boards are collections of your pins. So on Pinterest they're called pins. On Twitter they're called tweets. Or generically on all the networks, shares or posts, content. So Pinterest are called pins. Boards are collections of your pins. They're groups, they're organizations, they're like folders. On your computer you have a folder of this event, of the pictures or text, whatever. You have another folder of other stuff. So on Pinterest you can create boards for your pins. You can name in an active voice to convince people to view or follow and act. So let's say I'm going to uh, take advantage Halloween's coming up. Victor's Bakery, I want to sell Halloween themed um, cookies and such. So we can see uh, so an okay uh, a Pinterest board could be called Halloween cookies. And all of the cookies that I'm selling that are Halloween themed are in that board. That's what I'm trying to show people and promote and sell. The title of that board, Halloween Cookies, is OK. Better is, again, the active voice. What's in it uh, for the people? Uh, how can you sell it a little bit more instead of generically? Here's Halloween Cookies. It could be that I could name the board with an actual action. How to bake the best Halloween cookies, or buy the best Halloween cookies, or um, tasty <coughs> treats, tasty treats for Halloween hijinks. So I'm trying to think about Halloween keyword. Uh, I'm putting in the mm, the term of tasty adjective to guide people's thoughts already on it. They may or may not be tasty. I'm telling you they're tasty, so believe it. Um, treats. There's that keyword treats during uh, Halloween, and then just hijinks is uh, fun and frivolity and. Just uh, kids running around and trick or treating, because I like alliteration. Tasty treats for Halloween hijinks. That's personal. I, I like to do alliteration on marketing stuff. But I would say this is a little bit better than that because yeah, that's very obvious what what's in this board. But this is a little bit more fun, a little bit more active. Hopefully, to get their attention to click on the items and then click to buy. Yes. Yeah. So if if this company that you own has um, not just food but is selling masks, Halloween mm -hmm. masks, then 
different categories, health yeah. masks and costumes. Would you have separate, is it um, pay off to do separate boards for those um, other categories that you sell? Yes, I would do the boards for the different things that you sell, group them into those boards because then we can target the content of those boards to the right people. Where something like Twitter is just like all out there, all your tweets just go out there, mm -hmm. the right people might not see the right tweet. Pinterest, what I like, is that because you can group them into boards, they can go to the right people. Somewhat similar to Google Plus when we talked about it two weeks ago, that if I'm uh, uh, yeah, a pet shop and I want to sell dog food and cat food, I can group them into the right group and send it to the right people. And then for each board that, you, that we were just talking about, like let's say Halloween costumes, is there an optimal number of images for each board? I wouldn't say optimal, but I would say minimal. So when we do this in a moment, I have to double check the optimal number, uh, the minimal number. It just changed recently, I think. Um, so at least, uh, at least four pins per board. I'll double check that in a moment because we will see that a board shows you a preview of what's in the board. If you've only got one thing in the board, it'll show one thing in three empty slots. Yeah. So Is it'll more look weird. Because I could do in my business like. 50 photos, but I don't know if more is better. Maybe what I would do is, instead of those 50, break it down further into other like subcategories of those masks or costumes or cookies okay. and create more boards to show more. So, you know, minimum of four, maybe 10, 15, 20, or whatever, but maybe not 50 in one. Right. Kind of sp space it out to these different boards to try to reach the right people. <coughs> So to actually see this in action, uh, either on the top right corner, uh, well, we have sign up. I guess that's the only way. Click join as a business or sign up at the very top there. If you already have the account, it would let you sign in already. Let's see where sign in. If you just go to Pinterest.com and sign in as the business, it would let you sign in as the business. But if you need to create the business, how many of you do have already any version of Pinterest? A few people. And how many of you have uh, the, the business version of Pinterest? A few people. Okay. Most of us don't. So here's how we'll do this. Click join as business. This is going to ask you for this stuff here. So you can use the same email that you've used for the other networks if you want to keep it easy. Uh, but let me do a little quick side note on cybersecurity. This is more and more important nowadays. Excuse me. So if you already have an account, there's a different process for that. If you already I'm have one, account. yes, you would still go through this. You would not use the personal one to then create the business one. Like the other networks, you would just go through this process. Cybersecurity. Um, have a strong password. So minimum six letters and numbers, not simple words. Even higher security is different email for different accounts. What's that? Yes, this is the thing. Unfortunately, security is is uh, balancing uh, convenience versus security. Unfortunately, we have a trade-off at the moment. Things that are very convenient, using one password all the time, using one email all the time, is less secure. Because if someone knows my email and password to my Pinterest, and that's the same one I use to my bank. Now they have access to my bank. On the other side, higher security is less convenient. I'm going to have three different email addresses, one for my social networks, one for my bank, one for uh, the school. So three different emails that I have to use and remember and have different passwords and all of that. So inconvenient, but so secure. Because if someone gets your password for your social network, they don't have the password and the login for the bank. So this is really something that 
everyone has to decide on for themselves, and it really is up to you to decide this and, and live it, because yes, be as convenient as you want, but you're insecure. Too secure, it's very inconvenient. In the middle, you might have to figure it out. Well, I was just saying vague, vague ideas. Social networks, banking, and, and I said the school, like if you've got school stuff. Um, I personally have a different password for every account. Uh, I do use a couple of emails, but I do different passwords for every network. I have a system that, that I use to do a different password. Yeah, I'm on 40 websites, and yeah, I have 40 passwords, but I have a system that I use to create these passwords. And I do, here's another inconvenient thing, I change it often. I change it once a year. Some people are going to say, that's not often enough. But other people will say, every year a new password, 40 new passwords? Yes, because I want to be secure. And we're at this point, and you can be as, as safe and secure as you want, but it's still we're still figuring it out. Look what happened with Equifax. They're one of the biggest, most important companies with so much important information of ours, and they got hacked. And remember when Target got hacked, and Lowe's got hacked, and and all of these all of these uh, online companies. Yeah, everyone, everyone gets hacked because it's one weak one weak link in the chain, and it all goes down. So, at the very least, for yourself, you know, you'll, we'll drive ourselves crazy thinking about all the attacks that could happen. But at least for yourself, you have the power to decide: Am I gonna, am I going to use the same password, which is my my kids' birthdays, on all of my accounts? Or am I going to use kind of a mixing of letters and numbers that I can kind of remember? Maybe I'll write it down, but don't put it right on your notepad, a little post-it note on your monitor. Um, we have to figure this out. It used to be, well, all I need is all I need is my key and I'm going to get in. Well, someone's got a copy of that key and they get into your house. Now your key is digital, even harder to, I mean, even easier to get in. So did you hear something about Netflix creating uh, about both? sending out um, statements and creating uh, accounts to get your account information? That's kind of common. That's known as a phishing attack yeah. that that uh, the, the bad guys send out emails that look like a real email to try to hook you. It looks so real and people click it and then they go to the, one of these bad websites and you give them your information. Yeah, that's what they say they were doing yesterday. Mm -hmm. I got one very similar uh, a couple of days ago from the uh, from the iTunes store. It says we need to verify your information. Please please click he click here, and then the ad the email address was from Apple Store uh, dot Russia dot com or whatever, <laughs> and so that people would only see that first part that said Apple Store, right. and then they would click. But simply looking at the rest of the email address is not going to be at Apple dot com. So go ahead and put in some email here. You can kind of make this up at the moment to learn this and then use it for real later on. I'm going to make it up. Victor's Bakery at store.biz. I want a password here. Business name. Business type. Not a lot to choose from, but any of these sh should work. I've got this bakery, so it might be a local business. It might be a brand, maybe a real retailer. I'm going to do local business, optional website, but I would put your website, if you do have a website, to drive people back to your website. Facebook is ahead of these other networks that they can let you create a catalog and a store listing in Facebook. You can't quite do that on the other networks yet. I have seen on Pinterest that the big companies can do this, like you can buy something right off of Amazon or Macy's on Pinterest, but we're not Amazon and Macy's size yet. And eventually they will release it to all, to all accounts, but you still would want your website to drive them back to your storefront. Click on create. So, uh, as we talked about on the other networks, 
you want to use the network to reach an audience, but you also want to be active and you're going to run out of ideas of what to post every week or every three days or whatever your schedule is. So you'll need inspiration. You'll need to follow other accounts. On Twitter I would follow other accounts to see other bakeries to get ideas for me to share something. Same thing on Facebook, I would like or follow other accounts, other realtors, so I can see how they do it. Maybe I'll, if I'm a realtor in San Diego, I'm going to follow a realtor in Wisconsin to see how they're doing it, you know, not direct competition maybe. In Pinterest here it's saying, okay, what are you interested in? What is your business interested in? What is your business about? What is the sort of audience, what is the topic that your audience is interested in? So you, you want to select five here, and these can be changed or removed later. But Victor's Bakery, okay, food and drink. Maybe recipes. Maybe grilling recipes. DIY Christmas. So you guys know what DIY is? Do it yourself. So that's very popular on Pinterest. Uh, here's how to do it yourself. Now, the reason why this might be valuable for my business, Victor's Bakery, is in the real world marketing, It uh, this is an example of free samples. You go to Costco, they give you all those free samples. That tasted pretty good. Let me buy a, a box of it. DIY is sort of like free samples in the digital world. You give away a version of your recipe of your cookies, not with all of the best ingredients, just you know a version of it. They try it themselves, maybe they like it, and they're like, well, it's not, it's not as good as the original. Let me buy the original. So the idea between behind any of this DIY stuff is sort of like a free sample to entice the result that you want of a sale. So I'm going to select five and then done. Do you want to do it yourself? It's a free sample. Product. You share a version of the recipe of your food. Maybe give away, give away a PDF of a version of your book. Of your book, maybe a free chapter, one free chapter to get them hooked. Maybe I'm a public speaker and I have a free one-minute version of my speech. So all that DIY stuff is related to um, free samples. Do it yourself. Yeah, make that cookie yourself instead of buying mine. Well, it's going to be a version. It doesn't have all of the real ingredients. Maybe I give away one that's got seven ingredients and my real cookie's got 12 ingredients. It doesn't come out the same. They try it themselves, then maybe they are enticed to buy my real version. A one-minute self-help speech is not going to compare to the whole one-hour speech that you do sell in your, in your store. Um, sorry, so I had a personal one and I created a business one and it all the same topics that I was already following. So um, is there are they linked every time I do that in the personal it's gonna happen in the business and vice versa? Did you use the same email address on the personal mm -hmm. and the business? It might not exactly be that you did create the business. Oh, okay. You might still be using the personal one. Um, you can confirm that somewhere over on the settings, I think. So we'll check in, in, in the break. You might be reusing the same personal one. 
Could you show us how to upload photos yourself? Yeah, we'll, we'll be covering them. So when you create this uh, Pinterest account, the the big difference that because it's a business, you have something that uh, the personal ones don't have. Well, here's another way to confirm that. I've got analytics and ads. You wouldn't really see that on the personal one. Why would a person want to advertise their, you know, their 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 breakfast that they had? So a business would want to advertise their products, and a business would want to see the analytics, the results, the stats, the insights. So Pinterest also has ads, you know, boosting a pin, creating a campaign to target the right people. So you can look at that on your own, but everything we talked about uh, on Facebook applies here too. Slightly different names, perhaps. We've got audiences. Here they say promoted app pins instead of boosting a pin. Let's look at a couple of important settings and then we'll look at how to use Pinterest. On the top right corner, I have a little generic icon, a little person icon that. I want to change to be my the business. Um, looks really fun there. Twenty two easy after school snacks. So this is what you want. You want to catch people's attention. I, it just interrupted me in my lecture. I like I looked at that. I like it. That's what you want to do. You want to see stuff. You want to create stuff to catch people's attention. Twenty two easy after school snacks. Your kids will go wild over. Again, it's not just you know funny food. The thing's not called funny food. It's called 22 easy after school snacks your kids will go wild over it's so good into marketing marketing text here to catch attention and technically that photo is not that hard to take the the product itself the food itself is very creative but that photo is just they've got it on a table and I'm taking a photo of it that's it it's nothing that special question so that when that, it said woman's day on there so does that mean woman's day posted that when you click say It'll yes. Be website. Yeah, this is the website. We will we will see when we create the content. You know, we've got these links to guide people back to the website. You can do it without a link or with a link, and we want it with a link, and we'll see how to do it. So yes, whatever you post here, we want to maximize not just to share a nice photo, but a link back to go buy this, go check this out, go read this, go subscribe. So we'll see how to do that in a moment. But before we create the content, let's go look at these settings. If you hover over your profile in the top right corner, we'll go to settings. There's all of these items here of settings that you can go through. Here's where you change the email address, the password, language, etc. That all makes sense. The business, the name of the business. There's privacy. Hide your profile from search engines. You most likely do not want to turn this on. You don't want to hide yourself from the search engines. Maybe you could turn it on as you work on your site to get it perfect, but there's not much to do on it to get it ready for the public. So there's that option that you may want under settings. Nowadays, all the networks are all about ads for good and for bad. For bad as a person, because I don't want to see ads, I just want to see the fun stuff that I want of my friends and family and such. But for businesses, it's good because I want my ads to be seen by people. So here this is saying, use sites you visit to improve which recommendations and ads you see. Use information from our partners to improve which recommendation and ads you see. If you turn these both off, this is not about don't show me ads can't get away from that. This is, okay, you're going to show me ads in Pinterest. On You're going to show them to me, my business. At least show me ads that are relevant, food-related ads about restaurants and that sort of thing, not random things about technology or sailboats and that sort of thing. But what this is saying is use sites you visit. So if you have that on, this is putting a cookie on your computer Meaning that then, as I go to other websites, like the Internet Movie Database or whatever, 
Pinterest put a cookie that basically monitors that I've been to other websites and then when I go back to Pinterest it's gonna show me stuff about movies because I went to websites about movies. If you don't want it to do that you can turn it off but that doesn't mean you will not see ads. And this other one is the same sort of thing. Well Pinterest is partnered with other businesses do you want to see the ads of other businesses that are hopefully related to what you would care about? People have this also. Your customers have this. And you saw that the default was that it was on. So for us as a business, this is good. People may never go to those settings and turn these off. So they would see food-related pins they could see my food related pins if they are at food related websites as you search inside of Pinterest it also knows a little bit more about you to show you what might be relevant and you can clear that out if you want or deactivate the whole account what's the benefit of linking social networks I'm getting to that one moment then we've got over here, here's the icon of, the, of, of your business. Right now it's a generic person. Here's where you would want to add uh, the picture of your business. Notice that it's a circle. If your logo is a rectangular logo, most likely it'll either be cropped or shrunk, and it'll look weird. So you want a version of your logo that is a is a circular shape or a square shape that will be cut to be a circle. So uh, keep that in mind if you've got the wrong size shape for your logo. Right now my Pinterest account is pinterest.com slash victorsbakery0402. This is where you would change that username, that unique name, because the business name this uh, can, this is the one that's not unique. The username is the one that is unique, only one in the world can have it. Now one weird thing here is, let's say I'm setting it Victor's Bakery, and I'm going through all of these other things that we'll talk about. Not until you press save will it tell you that name is taken. On the other networks, it's smart enough that as you're typing it, it will tell you at that moment it's taken. So before you do too much here, perhaps you want to claim your name, click Save, and then it'll tell you if it's taken or not. But because this is a fake account that I've created just for testing purposes, it doesn't matter that this one's taken. And I would try to keep your username from all in your in all your accounts consistent. Use the same Victor's Bakery on all the networks if you can. So Pinterest has search, just like every other network, and that search is only inside of Pinterest. You have a spot to take advantage of that in the About You, About Your Business. I believe there is a limit here of how much you can write. 160 characters. That one's smart enough to tell you before you save. But your about you information in about you fill in 160 characters, which includes spaces and punctuation and numbers. Fill in 160 characters of complete sentences with keywords about your business to help you get found. So I'd write something like Victor's Bakery is a family-owned bakery in the heart of Chula Vista, founded in 1989. We focus on healthy versions of classic goodies. I've got the keywords bakery, family, family-owned, 
Chula Vista, healthy goodies. I'm creating up to 160 characters of more marketing speak of what of what people could be searching for. For the search, like for SEO um, consideration, could you just keep typing like bakery, bakery, bakery? No. You know what I mean? Yes, but no. Uh, you you shouldn't do that. These things are smart enough that they will see that that's a spammer's tactic. Spammers would do this. They would use the same keyword, one or two keywords, over and over and over to try to fool the algorithm. But nowadays, it wants us to be much more you know, realistic with a real sentence. So I, I, I would think about using the word bakery in different ways, but as a real sentence. I did bakery twice there, but it's not just the same word bakery over and over. So you know, real sentences. Okay. This is to help you get found. And you can use the same about information or bio information on uh, all the networks. That'd be fine. Location, address, city, whatever, and website. Once you start pinning, which we'll do soon, you can start to showcase, uh, show off these particular pins first. When people visit my account, they will see these things first. Maybe if I'm trying to promote certain things, most often I can showcase them. That's, uh, I, I said promote, but I meant it in free, free terms. Use promote to show off your most important pins first. Notifications. On most of these networks, when you first create an account, all of these network, all of these not all these networks have notifications turned on, and then suddenly you get so many emails in your inbox that are annoying. Um, I would recommend for on most of these networks, you go over to the screen where it says, you know, everything. Email me everything that happens. Email me when someone likes my pin, when someone comments, when someone shares it, whatever. I think that's way too much. I personally log into the network to manage the network. I don't really like having all of these emails in my inbox to remind me of what's happening to the networks. Then like you can't you can't you can't catch your breath. You have to look at everything. Everything's an email, everything's a, a notification and you just can't manage it. I would recommend on all of these uh, probably cut them down and you go edit you can tailor them or just turn them all off and simply log into fa into Pinterest or Facebook or whatever and use and use the network at that moment. Home feed, that's fine, whatever. Okay, social networks. So depending on the social network at the moment, Pinterest uh, has the ability for you to connect with these other networks as opposed to Facebook in the old days, you used to be able to connect your Facebook to your Twitter. So when you posted something on Facebook, it would automatically also go to Twitter, and vice versa. Back when they were friends, you would be able to post on Twitter, and it would automatically go to Facebook. But now they're not friends anymore. And now Facebook is the biggest one of all that doesn't have to be friends with anyone. But it looks like with Pinterest, they still have that. You can connect with these networks, and not all of them give you that ability anymore that you can post on one and it'll go to the other. But connecting these different networks have a value because also that will alert you to Janet is on Twitter, why not also connect with her on Pinterest? You know, you are connected together on Twitter, invite her to connect with you on Pinterest. That's why it's also saying Gmail and Yahoo. Would you allow us to look at your address book to tell you these connections of yours on your address book are also on Pinterest. Why not link up with them? Why not get them to follow you? So connecting to these networks gives you the ability to see who else is on the network, to reach out to them, your address book. Like which, the right, make sure they look at the right one. If this is created as the business, this should be the right one. So, if you like can, if you have a Facebook page and you want to add a personal one and you want to focus on this thing, and I want this Pinterest account, this business to connect to the business one. 
that one I have to double check on that, but that one is the one that often is the problematic one. That it's often that it's the personal Facebook page connecting with the business. Uh, from business to business on the networks, I often see that it's kind of tricky and I think they do it on purpose on Facebook. Because again, they want people to use it for people and businesses for businesses and they, they tweak it. Share pins and boards on Facebook. So okay, it looks like yeah, if you if you connect your Pinterest to Facebook or Twitter, whatever you pin on Pinterest will also go off to Twitter or Facebook. So it's kind of like buffer built into Pinterest. And the purpose of your Gmail and all of that is for it to check your address book uh, to know uh, who else is on Pinterest for you to connect with them. Security, here's how you can check if people, unauthorized people, have uh, logged into your account or not and kick them out. And then apps. Uh, if you are using the app on your device, for example, all of these networks have the version where you can download the app and do it on the go. Uh, I think that is very useful, definitely. You can take a photo and right away put it on Pinterest. Whereas here on my desktop computer, I have to somehow get the photo off of my phone and into my computer so that then I can share it on Pinterest. And I'll show how to do that a little later, but having your apps right on your device can quickly um, let you use it easier. But I personally like to use all of these networks on a real computer because it's a bigger monitor, it's a keyboard that I can actually type on instead of the virtual one here. If you make any changes, make sure to save. It saved and it took me to my profile, which is the same as if you hover over, so wherever you're at, if it didn't go here, if you hover over your icon, go to my profile. This is your business's profile. I have zero followers, so I need to start to build my followers. But I'm not going to be able to very easily if I don't have a uh, profile, if I don't have a biography. Why would someone follow an account that I see it like this? It looks like a spam account. It looks fake. There's nothing about what is this bakery about. I don't see a location. I didn't save the about info. I don't see a logo or the person's face or something. So you definitely want to... Uh, fill out your profile completely for all the networks. I, I don't recall if I mentioned this, but I'll say it again. On all networks, before starting to build followers, complete the profile. So that's about info or the bio info. Uh, icon, some of them have also a header image which is a big image that appears at the top. Not all the networks have the same things, but they all have some basic way to say what is the account about, and some sort of picture to display the icon, logo, or one cupcake, or something. Also, create some basic content before starting to build more followers. So that would be usually two to three posts in total. Again, if I have if I fill out my biography and I have a, my logo, that might still not be enough to entice people to click follow. If I publish, if I pin publicly two or three pictures of my products, then people can see what they're up, what I'm about and possibly follow. Like over on Google Plus. Uh, I'm trying to get followers. Uh, what's my business about? Well, before I try to build those followers, I want to post a few a few things. When we talked about Google Plus and I said about communities, remember there were a few communities that said ask to join. You can't get into that community unless they check you out and allow you. Well, if you have nothing of value on your profile when you ask to join a community, what are they going to base it on to allow you in the community? So here on Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and all of them, I did say 
over and over on Facebook, the value, the best value there is for you to boost your posts. But I would still, for free, on Facebook, post one thing this week, two things next week, one thing today, two things in two days, whatever. Post some stuff to have there to show people why you would be worthy of, of being followed. So here on Pinterest, I have no pins, I have no boards, and there's this other thing they call tried, that I tried this thing. I made that recipe or I went on that vacation. This is again about the active voice on Pinterest. So we'll do uh, save a pin in a moment. Instead I want to look at boards. As I said before, boards is one of the unique things about Pinterest and this is your these are your these are like your albums, your organization of your content. Interest. Create one to three pin boards, or I just call them boards now. Boards to get started, and then each add at least, let's say three, but I think it's a few more. Add at least three pins to each board. So if I if I right now have the idea to create seven boards because I have so many things that I want to share, so many ideas. Well, on each of those seven, I should post into them three things. We'll see why specifically in a moment, but it'll make your board look empty if there's nothing in it, of course, or one thing. So that's why I'm saying one or three, one to three boards is good enough to get started, and then in each of those boards three or more pins. Let's give it a try. So here under boards, I see create board, so I'll click. What's the name? Is it a secret? Is it private? We have this ability to make private boards where you allow only certain people to view it, like a special VIP board with certain coupons or, or something. So I have to do the effort to entice people to contact me or request that they view the secret board. Most of the time it will be a public one, so you won't, you won't turn that on. And again, if I simply call this Halloween cookies, that's basic. Notice it's advising you here, name it something like places to go, recipes to make, an active voice again. So I could, this is Victor's Bakery, you can say um, kid-friendly goodies. I'll create that. That takes me to the, that takes me inside the board. I have to it's a little annoying, so you have to go back to your profile. You've got one board. This is what I'm saying about why you want three or more. It used to be, it used to be three, and now it seems to be more. These little squares right here represent a preview of what's inside the board. And it looks like this is six. So if I don't want that to look empty, if I only put one picture into this board, it'll be right there, and everything else will look empty. So I had seven boards that I put, but they all have one thing, and it kind of looks empty, like I, I, I'm i halfway. I'm not doing it seriously. So again, I would start with one or three, one to three, but each one of these three at least so that the board doesn't look empty, like you're a newbie, like you just started off. Let's say I create another one. Let's see another active one. So I'm trying to sell Halloween treats. Um, again, this is the DIY. Let's do here DIY Halloween spooky recipes. What you write for these, it's simply not just a folder that you might do like on your own computer, you know, tax returns. This you need to be more uh, 
active to entice people, look here, click on this and view this, so that ultimately, hopefully, they buy my product or call me or whatever. So if I'm giving, if I'm saying here DIY, the people that are really into do-it-yourself, uh, hopefully that catches their attention. Halloween is coming up, so as people search in Pinterest for Halloween, my board could appear. I have here, okay, recipes. Your, this is what you're in for if you, if you look here. And just more for the marketing and for the voice of the business, I've got the adjective spooky. This would be fine if it was just DIY Halloween recipes. But I have a sort of a, a style that I'm doing here, a, um, a voice that I'm creating, a persona, a mood of my business. Uh, I might not use, you know, those that sort of keyword. If I'm a, if I'm a realtor, I don't want to take people to a spooky house, uh, or if I'm a tax preparer, that that wouldn't work there either. So the right language for the right industry, it's something to develop. I'll create that. It used to be that when you were creating these things, you also had extra options. Now it's just like create the board, move on, populate it. So here's something for me to show you that those that don't know this are going to get left behind. There's extra options that you can add to these boards to help you help them get found more. After you create the board and you go back to your profile, you see that your boards have a pencil when you hover over them. If you click the pencil, it goes back to change the name, but then you've got a description. You've got a box where you can write even more sentences with keywords to help you get found. I don't have to write the whole huge sentence that I had the idea of under name. I'll write that huge sentence in description. So that's nowadays that's like a that's that's a that's a pro tip. A few, you know, a year or two ago, this was the screen that you would see when you created the board. But Pinterest for whatever reason decided, let's just make it super simple, create the name and move on. But this is going to help you more because your competitors might not know this or do this. So after you create a board, pro tip, after you create a board, edit the board, to add a description, and a category. Which might e which might be even more, uh, which might be even more, in important than uh, than the actual description, because when we created the account, remember it asked choose five interests. Those are those categories. So I didn't set this to any category by default, so it might be harder for my board to be found. With this tip. You can go here and go to these categories, and this board is going to fit under food and drink, or maybe DIY. And here I would write whatever amount of space I have with those keywords of what's in the board. Pinterest does one thing weird that I hope they fix. You have managers in most of the other networks. Different people can log in with their own password and help you manage your, your profile. Well, Pinterest doesn't have that yet. The closest thing is collaborators. You have to, if they've already got a Pinterest account, you add their name and invite them. If they don't have a Pinterest, you add their email and invite them. So they have collaborators. I think it's kind of clunky. I don't think it works as well as the other networks manager uh, options. I create the board, 
I put in people's names here and invite them, and then they become managers of that one board. I created seven boards. I will have to do that seven times. And I'm going to make three people help me manage it, so I have to send 21 emails. Yes? On the boards, uh, for example, let's say that um, we're doing uh, the papers, right? Mm -hmm. So we can have a board on dates. We can have a board on bread. Um, yeah. So your boards, do you just keep adding to your boards like a thousand breads and a thousand dates, or do you start? Or, or is there that was the question from earlier. Uh, so. I would start to separate it at a certain point. You wouldn't really want to have thousands or hundreds on each board if you can further organize. If you simply call it bread, first of all, that's a minus one point because you don't want to have it so simple as just breads. You want to have, right. you know, uh, more detail. But then, you, you know, you, you if I would think about, you know, there are seasonal breads. So I would create, you know, Thanksgiving breads and put those in there. I, I have to check if you can have one in more than one board. But if not, you know, you have the, the, the particular item in a particular board. So I wouldn't overload it with so much content because then it's too it's too wide of a net. Again, we're always trying to find the right audience. So if I have so many things in like only three boards, it's gonna be harder for people to find. So I would think about specializing by having different boards of a more specific topic and putting stuff in each of those boards. So for clients, the reason I'm asking for clients that, that say, well, my brand is um, best beer for this mm -hmm. right and they put a board and it's like best beer, you know, really want best beer for this you know, mm -hmm. and they just get so ginormous. Yeah. That, that's because they, they don't okay. know or understand a, about that value of specificity. So you do want to be more specific to reach the right audience. So use collaborators, collaborators, collaborators. Use collaborators to uh, help you manage a board. You must invite each person. Yes. Other collaborators, can you request to be a collaborator? You don't know on your Facebook you can request to be Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I'd have to look that up. Um, I sort of sort of don't doubt that there is that ability. Probably is that ability. Uh, worst case scenario, you would get in touch with the creator of the board and, and you know talk to them directly, ask them, yeah. There might not be like asked to join the board. I kind of remember that, but from a long time ago, that there was a way to kind of do it that way, but I haven't seen it recently unless I unless they've removed it or made it harder to do. But we can look into that. This is the one, this is why I'm saying I hope Pinterest fixes it. This is the one Pinterest that this is the difficult one compared to the other networks. On this one, uh, on this one, we do have the one email account specifically set up to manage Pinterest. Whereas every other one, we could use our own email addresses to add, to go in as a manager. So one special account set aside just for Pinterest, we all log in. That goes back to what I said about security versus convenience, because then now that's very insecure if seven people have access to the one email address and I do all of my cybersecurity very seriously, and everyone else is like, oh, well, it'll work out. And they're, they get hacked, that account got hacked, the company account got hacked. That happened, I remember, a few years ago, because I've taught this class since 2013, so I, I do this over and over, and I see what happens. And uh, a couple of years ago, I remember teaching the class, and the day before, Chipotle had been hacked. So the Chipotle... Facebook or Twitter or whatever was hacked, and whoever hacked into it suddenly started to put swastikas and stuff all over it. They caught it within a few hours, but of course, you know, the damage was done for a few hours, and suddenly their page was a hate, a hate site. And it was because someone, you know, one person was the weak link, and they got into the account of this national brand, and that's, that happened.
Yes. You um, upload a, a picture yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that combines then with how do you tell it what um, board to get put that photo in? Mm -hmm. And then how do you get your own photos at the top of your board versus all those five that you had to follow initially? Well, we'll, we'll talk about those right now when we actually start to create content. We can't create too much content without having boards. So now that we've created boards, now we can start creating pins. Okay. Yes? Um, on the invite, if, if I receive that invite, if I don't want, if I want to take part in it, can I do that? Hmm, that's a good point. Usually because I deal with it, that I have to deal with it with the clients, I always accept. So I would assume there is a decline or an ignore. Okay. I mean, because you're, you're saying put in, say, five or six emails of Potential collaborator, but if I, on the other side of the table, do not want to collaborate, do I have the option of ignoring it or not? Or uh, yes, yes, you do, but I would ask the question like, why would you be wanting to add collaborators that don't want to be collaborators? I know that you're, you're inviting them, but you're, you have to assume ahead of time that they want to be invited. Like, that's yes. Okay. So it's like Facebook. I wouldn't, I would only give other people a managerial role that are that are part of the business that will be posting stuff to the benefit of the business on Facebook. Collaborators here is like that. I would really use it as there are two other people in my bake Victor's Bakery that I also want for them to put photos of the baked goods in that board. So I, it would be a moot point. I really would only want to invite collaborators of, of my business and employees and partners and such. Let's do one quick break. I know we're getting to the end of the day, but we've had long lectures. Let's take one short break until 12.35, a little bit less than 10 minutes, just to stretch your legs. We'll be back at 12.35. I won't kick you out, but we'll be back at 12.35, and then we'll see about actually pinning stuff and how that all works. Mm -hmm.